Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So last time we have considered irrotational solenoidal part of the flow that is that part of the flow for which the divergence is 0 as well as the curl is 0. Since the curl is 0 this velocity field can be expressed by a scalar potential and then that scalar potential satisfies the Laplace equation we have discussed some general properties of the Laplace equation and consequently the general properties of the irrotational solenoidal flow field. We have also discussed that uniqueness condition in a singly connected domain and we have seen that the irrotational solenoidal flow field can be determined uniquely if we know or if we specify the normal component of the velocity on all the boundaries or the potential function itself over all the entire boundary or a combination of the two. That is the normal component of velocity specified on some part of the boundary and the potential is specified on the remaining part of the boundary. Altogether it implies that in any case the boundary condition must be specified over the complete boundary which is said also is a requirement for the solution of Laplace equation or in general in any elliptic partial differential equation that the solution of an elliptic partial differential equation can be obtained if the boundary condition over the entire boundary is known. Knowing only on the part will not be sufficient we have to know it over the entire part of the boundary. <coughs> Next, we will see it for not singly connected domain or rather the multiply connected domain when the flow field is multiply connected. <coughs> we earlier mentioned that in the singly connected domain the potential function phi is a single valued, but it is not so or need not be so in a multiply connected domain. This comes from the very simple fact that in a singly connected domain if we join two point by say two path say any two point O 2 P by any two path since the domain is singly connected. this is a reducible curve that means we can shrink this curve this closed path to a point and consequently these two curves together forms an open surface and we can apply Stokes theorem to it. There is a line integral of the velocity over this closed path is same as the curl of the vector field the velocity in this case over this surface and since the curl of V for irrotational solenoidal flow is 0 at each and every point that surface integral is 0 meaning that the complete line integral is 0 okay. that is what we took it that V dot d x. is curl of V in D A. <laughs> uh, 
and this is 0 <coughs> and from this we concluded that since this v dot d x is same over all the path. So, v dot d x which is <coughs> the difference in phi from one point to the other is same over all path. So, as we move from O to P whatever path we take the change in phi will be same consequently the P phi at P is also same whatever path we follow or the potential phi is single valued. This is in singly connected domain. Or singly connected region. <coughs> what happens it is if this region is multiply connected, then we cannot shrink this closed curve to a point without going out of this region. Let us take that. Think about we have an infinite circular cylinder or any object. So, this is another say this is a boundary, this is not just a curve, this is a boundary. Now, if we have any two points say O to P. So, this is one path and this is another path. Now, if we try to shrink this curve and even if we translate it to another side, we can never shrink it to a point without crossing this inner boundary, interior boundary. And when you are crossing the interior boundary, of course, we are going out of the region, because this part is not within the region, okay. this part is not within the region. So, we are going out of the region and we cannot sink it to a point, this is not a singly connected domain. Then <coughs> even though we now have a complete circuit integral over this closed path, we cannot equate it to this right hand side. Okay. And we cannot say that phi is single valued. In this case, we cannot form this open surface over which we can take this surface integral, this right hand side of this equation. We cannot have such a relation here. So, Stokes theorem, this is what is Stokes theorem. is not applicable for the irreducible curves. But remember that still if the car if this path is reducible like think about another path here from these two point we can have this type of path. So, in for this case again we can apply hmm. but for these paths we cannot apply it. <laughs> so, phi or the velocity potential is not necessarily single valued it may be single valued, it may not be.
Now, before we proceed further, let us say a few words about different type of regions and different type of curves. We are talking about reducible curves for some time and we have already derived the redu we have already discussed that reducible curves are those curves which can be shrunk to a point without going out of the region. And in this case in our case the region is simply the fluid, okay. but quite often we will only call region or domain because these are basically mathematical concepts. <laughs> this curve can also be stated that if there are two points within the region or within the fluid and if we can join them any two point and if we can join them by a line without going out of the fluid or without going out of the region and then if any two such curves form a closed path this region is called simply connected or singly connected that is the way properly this singly connected domain is defined. That if we take any two point within the region and can join these two points by a path without ever going out of the region and if we can form two such path which make a reducible closed curve then that region is called simply connected. If not the region is not simply connected. Now, there is degree of connectivity, when it is not singly connected it might be say doubly connected, it might be triply connected or it might be in general inply connected. This is called the degree of connectivity. How do we define degree of connectivity? <coughs> to that think about that we have any region or doubly connected in which there are some set of curves which cannot be shrunk to a point which are not reducible. Now, think about that we are inserting barriers within that domain. The barriers which has no thickness, but has only two sides. So, in the form they are in the form of open surfaces and if by inserting these barriers we can make the region singly connected. Now, depending upon that how many barriers are required, the degree of connectivity is defined. If we need only one barrier to make the region simply connected, then it is a doubly connected region. If we need two such barriers, then it is a multiply connected or triply connected region and if we need n minus 1 such barrier it is inply connected region. As an example look to this that we have think about this region we have an, infi an infinite cylinder and another boundary which is far away and there is fluid in between these. You can think about the situation flow over a cylinder. Okay. If the for a solid cylinder the solid part is of course, not fluid region that is out of the region. So, think about let us say this is and let us say that this is the region in the form of infinite cylinder. Now, in this case you can see that any curve, any closed curve that loops the circle they are irreducible. The curves which do not loop the cylinder they are reducible. So, here there are two different sets of curves, some curves which loops the cylinder they are irreducible, some curves which do not loop the cylinder they are reducible. <coughs> now, think about that we have inserted one barrier in this form. So, that this is also a boundary of the region.
insertion of this boundary still does not make this domain unconnected, different regions of the domain still are connected, they are not unconnected. This is also another requirement that when we insert the barriers, we must not make the region unconnected. Like we, ca we cannot think about a barrier like this, then these two part, if we think about a barrier like this, that is not allowed, because that will make these two regions completely unconnected. This barrier will also be thought of as a boundary, no, it is no, no longer fluid. Hmm. Now, see that just by inserting one such barrier this region has become singly connected. Okay. You can now think of any curve that can be sunk to a point, any closed curve. Like see, the, if you take about these two points, any two curve joining these two points will be these curves. these curves not crossing this, because we cannot cross that is out of the boundary, out of the region. So, just by a singly simple barrier, single barrier we have been able to make this region singly connected. So, this is called a doubly connected region. If we need two such barriers, it is a triply connected re region. If we need n minus 1 barrier, it is amply connected domain. So, n minus 1 barriers are sometimes simply called cut. Think about now that instead of one cylinder, if there are two cylinders, instead of one cylinder, if there are two such cylinders, let us say that then these are the two barriers that will make the region singly connected. So, this becomes two barriers are required. So, it is triply connected region. And you must remember that they are boundary, they are part of the boundary, they are no longer part of the fluid region, they are part of the boundary. <coughs> In this case, we will mention also something which are called reconcilable curves or irreconcilable curves. Two closed curves are called reconcilable if you can make them coincide with each other by translating them, by deforming them. If you can make them coincide, then they are called reconcile, reconcilable.
now which are which cannot be made identical or which cannot be made to coincide they are irreconcilable. Like think about this doubly connected reason, this doubly connected reason. Think about any close any closed curve which is not looping the cylinder. Think about any closed curve that is not looping the cylinder. Any such two curves you can make them identical or make them coincide by translating and deforming them, you can make them coincide. But think about two curves, one of them is not looping the cylinder and the other is looping the cylinder. You cannot make them reconcile. So, they are irreconcilable. So, in a doubly connected domain, there are two sets of irreconcilable curves. In a doubly connected region, there are two sets of irreconcilable curves. One of them, one of these sets are reducible, the other is irreducible. Similarly, in a triply connected domain, you will have three sets of irreconcilable curves. and <laughs> one of them is one of these set is reducible curves the other two are not. So, in general in a NP connected region you will have n number of irreconcilable curves or n set of n sets of irreconcilable curves out of these n sets, one set will be reducible curves, the other n minus 1 sets will be irreconcilable curves. So, whether a particular region is singly connected or multiply connected that can be stated either by checking whether we can make it singly connected by inserting number of barriers or by thinking that how many sets of irreconcilable curves can be drawn in this region. <coughs> so, to check whether a particular region is singly connected or not, you need to think either in terms of these barriers that whether we need to insert barriers, if so how many barriers and then you can de determine what is the order degree of connectivity of that region. Alternately, you can think in terms of these reconcilable curves and see how many irreconcilable curves are possible to draw in that region and that, that will give you the order of connectivity. Remember, in case of barrier, if, if you need n minus 1 barriers, then the region is amply connected, okay. n minus 1 barriers and amply connected. If you are thinking in terms of irreconcilable curves, then there are n sets of irreconcilable curves in a amply connected region. Out of these n sets, one, sets, one set is reducible curves the other n minus 1 sets are irreducible curves. <coughs> With this now, let us come back to our fluid mechanics. First of all, think about a doubly connected reason. That is perhaps the most interesting and important for aerodynamics. So, let us consider a doubly connected region and we can make it specified. Think about an infinite long cylinder or flow over an infinite wing, a wing which is infinitely long or flow over a cylinder which is infinitely long and there is nothing else, only the cylinder or the wing and the fluid. 
that is all. So, this is a these are an example these are examples of flow in doubly connected region. <coughs> now, already you have stated that in this case we cannot say the potential is single valued. The potential associated with the solenoidal irrotational part of the flow field is in general not si single valued. Let us see then what it is. Think about say this is our cylinder which is infinitely long. in both side it is to infinity. <coughs> now, think about two curves which loops the cylinder, but loops only once. A curve may loop the cylinder many times, but now think about a curve which loops the cylinder only once okay. and if you consider two such curves they are reconcilable they are reconcilable and that means you can make them coincide exactly one overlaps the other and for each point on one curve there will be a corresponding one point again on the other curve, which is called a one to one correspondence. That for every one every point on one curve, you have another point or you have a corresponding point or single point on the other curve, then it is called a one to one correspondence. Now, think about two such curves, which are reconcilable and having one to one correspondence and they are looping the cylinder just once. <coughs> then while reconcil reconciliation the cylind these two curves are translating let us say we have one curve looping the cylinder here once another curve looping it here and when you made them reconcile this is also translating that this is also translating. So, they trace out a surface reconciliation is uh, something like this let us say let us say this is the simplest possible thing this is the way they have been made to reconcile. So, they formed a surface the one that you have shown it forms almost a cylindrical surface. But anyway, whatever this shape of these curves are, while reconciliation, they will trace a surface, an open surface. Now, <coughs> if you apply then the Stokes theorem, it will simply give that the line integral of this irrotational solenoidal velocity field over this curve and this curve they are equal that is what you can say. You cannot get them to be 0, but you can find that this is 0. Let's write. So, two curves I just write the main points that I mentioned in this discussion two curves looping the cylinder once they are reconcilable with one to one correspondence.
with one to one correspondence. <laughs> surface described during reconciliation <coughs> so then application of Stokes theorem to this open surface let us uh, for simply call this car path as C 1, this car by C 2. this is what we can get, which we got in case of a singly connected domain to be equal to 0. In this case, we cannot find that this is this equals to 0, but we can find that this closed integral for any curve that loops the cylinder once have same amount of this line integral or this line integral or this closed curve integral will be same for all curves that loops the cylinder once, whether it is 0 or not that we cannot definitely say, it might be 0, it might not be. <coughs> and in general we will denote this value to be kappa called the cyclic constant. In case, in case this is 0, we will call the flow to be acyclic, if it is not the flow is cyclic having a cyclic constant. <coughs> if we think the curve is looping the cylinder many times, looping the cylinder many times, then you know that after every time it loops, this integral will go on adding. So, if it loops say m times, this integral will be m times this. this integral will be m times this. A m we have used for source strength, so let us forget it. Say say p times, then
How you can loom more than once? That is quite uh, simple. Think about again, say this is the cylinder. As many times as you want, it will go on looping. How do you close? You uh, end these two points, they are closed. <coughs> Here I have uh, do not that. And it can trace the same curvature again and again, that is also possible, but it is looping. If we just consider say this, the curve is now looping this cylinder many times. Now, once again we define that the potential function as before that potential at point x at position x is the potential at position initial point 0 plus In the case of singly connected domain, if we have two point O and P, then this whatever path we follow, this integral would have been given, this potential would have the same function, same value singly connected. But in this case, it may not be so. By if we let us say that O to P. this is x 0 and this is x. <coughs> if we take this path or if we take say this path, remember they are joined. The phi p at this point may not be same. the value will differ by the cyclic constant kappa. So, that is if we evaluate phi following this path and if we evaluate phi following this path, we will get two different values of phi at point p, but which will have a difference given by that cyclic constant kappa. Assuming that these paths are such that it is making one loop of closed curve. <coughs> okay. If we follow this path say we will call this path 1, path 2, so we will call it phi p following path 1 is not equal to phi p following path 2 and phi p as the case may be, <coughs> as the case may be, <coughs> if the two path make only one simple closed curve, only one loop of the closed curve, it is simply this kappa, but if it forms a complete p loop, p number of loops, then it is p times kappa. <coughs> However, the gradient of phi that is the velocity part the 
irrotational solenoidal velocity part that is still single valued that is quite obvious because this cyclic constant. So, gradient of phi will not be affected by this <coughs> cyclic constant gradient will remain single valued. So, even though phi is many valued so this we have considered for two dimensional case if we have an uh, sorry doubly connected region we have two values of phi at one point or even many values also if we think about the curve is looping and looping <laughs> and in but the gradient of phi is still single valued because this constant the cyclic constant is not affecting the gradient the derivatives are not affected. So, phi is not single valued, but grad phi is or we will say v equal to grad phi is <coughs> and obviously then the once again that Laplacian phi will still remain the equation. all other behavior which you have associated with velocity field they will remain as it is. The only thing is that phi is no longer single valued it is associated with a cyclic constant. If a in a singly connected domain it is only one cyclic constant if it is amply connected region we need n number of cyclic constant because we had n number of irreconcilable curves and applying the Stokes theorem to those all those n number of irreconcilable curves will have n number of cyclic constants. In a doubly connected region we have only one single cyclic constant of course, in some cases this cyclic constant may be 0. In case it is 0 if we find such a flow in which the cyclic constant is 0 then that flow is called a cyclic or always it is called a cyclic. Now, if you look back we have already found such a flow we have already found such a flow in which there was a single cyclic constant or rather we consider the flow we can say that we have considered the flow in a doubly connected region very nice example that infinite line vortex that we consider. If we have an infinite line vortex a line is basically on a limit of cylinder a line is a limiting cylinder. So, flow about that infinite line cylinder infinite line vortex is basically an infinite cylinder we can think of similar situation and if you look back to that velocity field that we obtained for a line vortex gamma by 2 pi s I think we wrote gamma by 2 pi s where s is the distance from the line vortex distance of the point from the line vortex gamma by 2 pi s. That is essentially an irrotational solenoidal flow in a doubly connected region. And in that case the strength of that line vortex gamma is the cyclic constant. We earlier expressed in that time <coughs> we expressed that that flow has a stream function associated with it which was gamma by 2 pi log r or log s
what it was minus gamma by 2 pi s or just gamma by 2 pi log s potential uh, sorry stream function we earlier the stream function we wrote as gamma by 2 pi s gamma by 2 pi log and now you can see that we can write can you write what should be the potential function for that flow a potential function can be written in that case flow due to infinite line vortex the flow was only azimuthal so if you think in terms of r theta coordinate we had only u theta velocity u theta was that gamma by 2 pi r and in terms of potential function what is u theta 1 by r d phi d theta the velocity is gradient of phi the velocity is gradient of phi and in r theta coordinate the gradient is d phi d r the r component is d phi d r and the theta component is 1 by r d phi d theta. So, 1 by r d phi d theta equal to gamma by 2 pi say s we can call r uh, minus which is minus uh, minus gamma by 2 pi or oh, this one is this one was minus gamma by 2 pi log s. <coughs> so, what will be phi for that? S we can write R also, it is R will matter. Phi is how much? How much? Gamma by 2 pi? 1 by r d phi d theta is gamma by 2 pi r. d phi d theta is gamma by 2 pi. So, phi is gamma by 2 pi theta 1 by r d phi d theta is gamma by 2 pi r gamma by 2 pi r is what you have derived last time. So, for that where this r theta plane is normal to the line vortex and theta is the angle taken anti clockwise in that plane. If you have an infinite cylinder the, the r theta is normal to that and <coughs> theta is taken anti clockwise in that plane <coughs> theta equal to 0 is of course, arbitrary. Now, I do not know whether a question should come to your mind that we have mentioned or we have seen that this potential phi is defined when the flow field is irrotational. We have said if the curl of the velocity is 0, then the velocity is gradient of a scalar potential. So, the velocity potential is basically defined when the flow is irrotational. If the flow is not irrotational, then you cannot define a velocity potential. It is not that for all flow there is a velocity potential, no. If the flow field is irrotational, only then you have a potential. All flow field are not potential flow field. Then line vortex you know that vorticity is associated with rotation. The rotational part of the velocity that is what we call vorticity. Then if the flow is due to a line vortex, 
which is associated with rotation, how can we have phi of velocity potential? The answer is simple if you remember that what is this line vortex? We have considered that there is a singularity in vorticity distribution and the singularity is such that there is no vorticity anywhere in the flow, but only on that line, only on that line and for an infinite line it is equivalent to a two dimensional case. So, in a two dimensional only at that point, everywhere else there is no vorticity, but only at that point there is the concentration of vorticity. So, essentially this potential the flow field is not rotational only at that not irrotational only at that point, everywhere else it is irrotational. just because that there is a vorticity does not make that the flow field is rotational everywhere. The flow field is rotational only on that line or in two dimensional case only at that point. Everywhere else it is irrotational. Of course, the flow field is solenoidal. So, flow due to a line vortex is solenoidal and irrotational everywhere except on that line or on that point in two dimensional flow everywhere else. <coughs> so, Now, we will see now that what is the necessary condition for a particular flow field to be determined uniquely in a doubly connected region. We have already seen it for a singly connected region, but we would like to see what will happen in case of a doubly connected region. And <coughs> uniqueness <laughs> we can very simply state it this way like say that we have two so solution and let us say that they have same value of the cyclic constant, both the flows have the same values of the cyclic constant. Now, since the Laplace equation is a linear equation, what we have mentioned already the sum of these or difference of these two solution is also a solution. So, if you have two solutions which are which have same values of cyclic constant, same values of cyclic constant, then the difference of these two solution is a cyclic, there is no cyclic constant associated with that. We have phi 1 which is associated with the cyclic constant kappa, another solution phi 2 which also has the cyclic constant kappa. Then if we subtract these two, then that phi 1 minus phi 2 will have no kappa 
and again we know what would be the condition that phi 1 minus phi 2 that will be satisfied that should be satisfied again the same condition what we have found for singly singly connected domain because in that case the solution is like a singly connected domain solution if there is no cyclic constant the solution is same as the solution in a singly connected domain so if you have two solution from there with same cyclic constant from there we can see that the same condition what are necessary for flow to be determined uniquely in a singly connected domain they are also required if the region is doubly connected okay but we have already imposed another condition that the two solutions have same value of cyclic constant so if the two solution have same cyclic constant or the if the cyclic constant is fixed then we need the same condition what we needed for singly connected domain and we can say that in a doubly connected region we need an additional condition other than those condition that we had in a singly connected domain we have an additional condition that the cyclic constant must be specified if we want to find the solution uniquely for a particular problem we must know the cyclic constant specifically along with those other boundary conditions. Okay. 